Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another show. My name is Tyler, and I'm here with Matt, the founder of ORATS, an options analytics platform built on top of over 15 years of historical options data. Our dashboard is integrated with Tradier, meaning you can research and discover trades on our platform and then seamlessly send them through to your Tradier brokerage account. Today on the show, we're going to talk about the advantages of using ORATS data and APIs. Matt, do you want to share a screen and get us started by going over our positions? Absolutely. All right. So we had on a, uh, we call it a short risk reversal uh, with stock. So that's a caller. So that short risk reversal is long put, uh, long call or uh, short call. They used to call risk reversals because people used to just say, oh, I'm just going to do the puts and calls instead of the stock. So I think that's the on the floor, that's that's how I remembered it at least. And then, so we had that one. We did a Trump uh, risk reversal that uh, was hard to borrow. Um, short risk reversal, another one, um, hoping that it would be harder and harder to borrow, which it didn't end up being. So we lost a little bit there and I'll show you how to calculate how much we lost. And then the ABGO, we did the flapper, my favorite new strategy where I coined the term because it looks like a, uh, actually I'll turn on my drawing tool. Um, it looks like a, uh, it goes down, up, down. This is a, it's like an iron condor, but instead of it going like this, it flaps up. So I call it the flapper. So we did a flapper, which gets you long units so um, we sell, the, you know, kind of pretty far out of the money, but we get units, meaning uh, these are kind of a cheap way to get units. And as a matter of fact, uh, it, it's, it's done at a credit. So when, when what that means is now we could sell something against it and it, it doesn't cost as much on margin. Uh, so, so we did that. So we'll see how we're doing. Uh, so ABGO, uh, the short strangle, we sold it at a buck 19. It's now down to 28 cents. That's good. And the flapper, uh, stayed about, uh, where, where it was. So, um, you almost put on it. Well, maybe next week we'll put on a new, uh, a new trade there. Uh, but we're up like 190 bucks, uh, on ABGO on NVIDIA. We're up a thousand bucks. So that's good. And then Trump, we lost a little bit. So again, um, so we, we, we did this uh, risk reversal. So if you price it out at the, at the price of the stock, so 1726, uh, the 18s are worth uh, 74 cents. So, you know, we probably lost 20 cents on that one. So that's the 20 cents was the additional um put call parity that we paid over what we should have hoping that it would expand even from there and be even harder to borrow which it ended up not being so those are the trades tyler any questions on those there's three good trades there yeah quite a few go quite a few of them going on but um yeah they're, they're awesome. yeah so today um i wanted to talk about you know uh just comparing ORATS API uh, and data, really, just to other data, you know, in, in, you know what you need to, to do to have edge. So, uh, you know, my background is I started uh, on the floor of the SIBO in the '90s and um, kind of quickly started. Uh, you know, a lot of people did paper calculations back then, so I was pretty adept at at least Excel and macros and such. So I wrote um, a bunch of uh, analysis and then hired programmers and PhDs to come in and help me with the analysis. So one of the first things that we did um, was we wanted to uh, describe the, the uh, describe the, the option surface into parameters parameters that we could then trade from. So what that means is, and I'll go to an options chain here, Tyler. So an options chain uh, is basically all of the options and we kind of show it uniquely. We break it down 
like each one of these is um, is an expiration. So September expiration has these dots. And the reason there aren't as many dots is because uh, what happens is when you get closer to expiration, like this is just one day, there aren't that many that actually have deltas or, you know, that are not zero. So there's not as many options that have some uh, extrinsic premium. So that um, so that's why there are fewer there. And then what we do, so all, we, we, we put all these dots. We First of all, we line up um, the puts and calls. So the puts are purple, the calls are in cayenne. Uh, so you can see that they're almost overlaying except for on the extreme wings uh, when they diverge a little bit. And so the first thing that we do is to uh, line up the calls and put implied volatilities. And the way you do that is you, if you have a good interest rate, good dividend rate, or what we call, and then whatever's left is we call the residual rate. And we actually put build that into our calculations. So we work hard to line those up. So if you line up all these dots, then you could, then it's a, a matter of getting a good way to, uh, to draw a line. And, and we've, uh, we use graphic designers and there are a bunch of mathematical formulas that are beyond the scope of what I know or this call, but uh, to help draw that line. And uh, so I, I spent years on this. Like this is the hardest one because what you want to get are these, you know, very accurate uh, volatilities, uh, these very accurate uh, at the money volatilities. And so that's what you end up getting if you draw these lines well. Um, and so, uh, and so, you know, we spend a lot of time on that and then, and, and draw that line. And once you draw that line, then you could start to, to talk about, well, how much curvature is in there? And then you solve for that curvature. And then once you solve for that curvature, then you just have slope left, a straight line you should have. And then that line, we kind of say every 10 deltas, how much higher is the volatility? And we call that the slope. So this is about a typical average long-term slope over the last in our year is about 4%. So every, like I said, so if it's 100, 100 volatility at the 50 delta, it'll be a 104 at the 60 delta call. So, so far, so good, Tyler. Yeah, I think you explained it beautifully. And really the, what we tried to do, right, is uh, summarize all this options information, right? And with the goal being, when, when you have summarized indicators, you can compare them historically and you can make forecasts of those indicators and you can also compare them to related equities. And then that kind of opens up a whole new door of analyzing options and gaining an edge. Right. So that, and that gives you like a theoretical value, right? So you, when you forecast all those, you know, parameters, right? Slope, we, we call it derivative. Um, and we forecast historical volatility going forward. And then we forecast extreme long-term uh, implied volatility. So we get a parameterized skew. And then we could go uh, I think the trade builder does a good job of this showing how we value the skew. So, uh, so in XSP, for example, it's red down below, which means the puts are valued higher than the call. So that, that slope is actually pretty steep for XSP and the calls are a little bit cheaper. Um, I'll just try to type in some other ones um, quickly to see if, there's any other colors than red <laughs> out there. And yeah, so there's some green. So in, in Apple, we, we think that the slope is, is pretty slight. So we might say R. Yeah, it looks at that uh, heat map looking thing. Uh, it looks at both short and long term uh, right. slope and out volatility. Right. Um, so slope is underneath the forecast is basically what that what that means and it's down from kind of a current uh, highs in in apple for example so that's you know so one of the things that sets 
you know, ORATs apart and hopefully what people are doing is are these theoretical values. So once you get a parameterized skew, and what that means is, you know, of course, the, you know, like a short term and long term implied volatility forecast and then a, a skew forecast. Um, and, and then you you can start to make your uh, parameters. And then again, if you go back to the options chain, you could see, you know, two theoretical values right off the bat, right? So we go down to about at the money. So the, those theoretical values are our forecast vol and the smooth vol. And the smooth vol is, you know, from uh, above when we, when we drew that line through the dots, you know, that's a smooth vol. And so what the smooth vol is, is like, you know, 95 to 99% our theoretical values is within the bid ask spread. So you could see on these 230 calls out in October, uh, the market is 560 at 570, midpoint is 565. Our theoretical value is 566. So very close. This is one cent off too. So, and these are parameters. So this is, like I said, very difficult to do. And we do a really good job of it. It's not that meaningful. Or, or I should say it's not as meaningful for really tight markets. When you start getting markets no bid at three dollars, you have no idea. That then that smooth can give you a, a good idea of what the what you should be paying for, A, and how you should be hedging or to tell if you uh, you know it, if you have a good implied volatility at the strike, it makes your Greeks, all your Greeks, a lot better. Delta, Vega, Theta, Gamma, all those Greeks are better if you have a good, what we like to call a smooth value. Because what you'll see out there is, is some, some people just, they just take the bid ask, imply volatility, right? And, um, you know, and it might be like, you know, if you're out here, um, uh, if you're out here, it's like, you know, what do you do? You know, it's no bid. So the bid imply volatility, ask imply volatility, mid volta. It's no bid at 63. You know, so if you are using the mid, you often they just go towards the only one that they publish. But it's really should be we, you know, we kind of flatten it out at 27. Um, and then then you're able to actually make a, a theoretical value and a delta. Like, but if you were to use 63, that might have a like a two cent or a three cent uh uh, theoretical value, which would be wrong, and you'd get a bad delta as well. Does that make sense, Tyler? Yeah, so that's one of the use cases for the uh, smooth percent. Um, and I want to move on to some more of the other theoretical values and other advantages, because uh, the time goes by quick. But <laughs> I, I think, you know, there, there's just so many. And, you know, now we yeah. can move on to the forecast edge and the distribution edge, right. and how those are used in the option scanner. Uh, to find trades. So obviously, this this is a great use case of the S percent. Yeah. So, and like we saw before, our forecast is slightly positive um, for Apple. Uh, you know, just based on, on what we saw uh, on the trade builder, and then um, and yeah, and, and and what you can do is I'll clear out these and just put F. So these are kind of short term. Oh, F. Why don't I put F? Let's do Apple. Uh, so we'll probably be buying. Um, you know, these are long call spreads and short call spreads and all that. So what we're going to find is is that yeah, a long call spread, short put spread, uh, kind of the mirror images of one another are going to be uh, what we're going to like more uh, for this particular um, uh, for this particular stock. So what we could do, Tyler, put on a trade here. So anyway, let's just take a look at. It. So um, we'll talk about D percentage a little bit later, but F percentage is forecast percent and S percent is that smooth percent. So as a matter of fact, if, when you start seeing it over one, uh, like I uh, will filter these down between two, but if you sit seeing it over one, sometimes actually, let's just take it. I'm going to, let me erase this and then we'll take a look. So here's one of four. In October 20, let's go take a look at this in the chain. So a cool thing is in the option scanner, you click on it, it, it sets up the trade. 
we see there's some edge and we go over to the options chain um, and we could see where the edge is coming from. So, we're, so you know, the SMV here is 132. So this is a case where we think uh, we're, we're kind of outside. So we're, we are, um, you know, we think it's worth less. So we would sell this one and this one's kind of in the middle. So we would buy that one. And so that's giving us some smooth edge. Now, what happens is uh, market makers know that usually. And, and let's, let's just take a peek at it here. And if you click on it, you can see here. So you can see that, um, you know, our smooth edge, uh, you know, we draw the smooth edge through it. You can see that one's under and one's on. So often market makers will, will are, are doing the same thing. So you won't get filled if it's got a ton of edge, but this we might get filled on. So I, I'd be inclined to look at this trade, Tyler. So let's go back to the option scanner. Um, so that's a smooth edge. That's the forecast edge. And the distribution edge um, is a little different. So distribution edge is the third type of edge that ORETS has. And basically how we do that is we put all these actual stock moves for the number of uh, days into a bucket and then make a distribution out of that. And we adjust it a little bit for a high implied, low implied. We'll adjust those more to the middle. Um, and then we'll, we'll make this bucket and, and an expected return is multiplying the percentage by what the value is here. So this is red. So you'd multiply this red loss of $87, which is the premium that you're paying times, I think it says 11%, 0.7%. So you, then you would add up all the nodes and that's an expected value. And that expected value is 85 cents, which is incredibly close to what it is. <laughs> it's 84 cents in the market right now. And our forecast edge, as we talked about, we're, 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 we're kind of projecting higher volatility onto Apple. So we're, we have five cents of edge there. So, uh, so those are, those are the, the three types of edges. Um, right. Tyler, yeah, again, yeah. That, you know, that these are just one of many, things that give us a lot of uh of uh differentiation and edge in the market but those those are important theoretical values tyler yeah it's a great way to trade i mean orats is built for traders uh you know it's it's a great way to scan for options and to see you know where orats is valuing it versus where perhaps you're valuing it or where the market's valuing it at. um let's talk matt a little bit about uh, some more of the other advantages. Uh, I, I want to talk specifically uh, the Outlook tab and uh, then sort of in that same note, related equities. So best ETFs right. uh, and sort of the underscore C symbols that ORATS has, uh, unique to ORATS, that uses the same data that we've been talking about in sort of a different way. And, it, and you know, instead of scanning for options, this is a great way to scan for stocks. So it's, you know, full full circle. Yeah, so you know what you're talking about is once you get a very good measurement, then you could do a lot of things with it. One of the things that you could do with it is, well, now that we have a good what we call constant maturity implied volatility, so usually at the 30-day, uh, you know, one month implied volatility, how does that compare to all of the components in the XLK, which is the most uh, appropriate ETF of the spider ETFs. And to that end, uh, you know, it's on the low end. So this is another reason we think uh, we we think that implied volatility is a little bit cheap right now in Apple. Uh, so that's, you know, that's one of the, the one of the reasons is that Apple is cheap compared to where it, you could just kind of look. It looks like it's about 80% usually, and that, and then recently it's been lower, uh, the volatility in Apple versus its brothers in arms in the technology space. Yeah, it's a really unique comparison that, you know, I don't think anybody else does this, uh, yeah. at least does it to this. Uh, yeah, I've, ne I've never seen it. I think it's a great way to, uh, I think internally some, some trading firms do it, but I've never seen anyone offer it. Same yeah, thing about art, yeah. Yeah, same thing with the slope, Tyler. So again, when we get this very accurate way of calculating slope, uh, then we can compare slope uh, to to uh, all of its XLK brethren. My office mate wants to come in the door. 
didn't quite learn how to open the door yet. I think what what OREX is doing with all these indicators, it you know, it's a steep learning curve, right? Like if you're coming in as a retail trader and you're just starting to learn about options and you know, seeing all these indicators and all this talk about volatility surface and slope and all you know, all these the, the lingo, right? It's it can be overwhelming, but what you're going to find is that it's almost necessary to use this data in today's market environment because as a retail investor, you're competing against algorithmic trading and robots and hedge funds, you know, doing all these trades. You're competing against them. So you want to have this institutional quality data delivered to you in a, in a quick and easy way. And that's what ORATS offers. Yeah. And, you know, we have it. A ton of data like historically all the way back to 2007 so you, and you could back test on it you know so this is one of the reasons that we built the back tester is like people say well how do we know this data is good and then we say well you could back test on it so you know again when you're looking for data you want to look for all these things one um you know well thought out comparable over different symbols indicators and then also the ability to view all these things historically, get a look at it, uh, and then also be able to back test on it. I remember when we used to at the, bring our data down to the floor, people used to be shocked because like they go, oh yeah, that's what I thought. Like they, a lot of the, the really good traders knew these things intuitively. And then I would need to like figure it out from a, from a, a statistical point of view, but you know, when they, when they see these graphs, they go, oh, yeah, I remember that. Or was, that was a big trade. Or it was, it's funny to talk, you know, it was, it'd be funny to go to different pits and talk to the, the old school traders and see, like, like we would say, what happened here? And they would know. So it's kind of, it, it's pretty, uh, pretty neat thing when, when you could do that. Yeah. Uh, and it's great that we have it all live now. Uh, so, you know, we yeah. recently rolled out real time option scanning uh, to the dashboard. Uh, for everybody. So uh, very easy to, to get onboarded to that. Uh, and it, it makes trading much more practical. I mean, ORETS is connected to three different brokerages. And, you know, no matter who you use, you can use live data and do your stock scanning and option scanning and analysis in the ORATS dashboard and then send your trades uh, through your brokerage. And, you know, like just to that point, you know, we're calculating implied volatility is live, like the market just peeped out and volatility, you know, was shooting up like almost before that happened. So that's a pretty good indicator right there. So indicators can now be used like live, which is pretty yeah. amazing. All right, Tyler, why don't we, uh, why don't we get a trade for, for the folks? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, All right. Let's go to option scanner. So Apple, again, um, short put spread, uh, is um, that looks to be like not much distribution. Oh, you could uh, weight these rankings too. So if you want to like wait, uh, I just had a forecast in there, but now we'll put a little distribution, a little smooth. And, you know, so then we get some of these trades that, uh, you know, like this long call spread uh, might be one to look at. Um, to see if there's any the other way, meaning these are all, uh, oh, here's a long put spread. So we can go long call spread, long put spread. How's that? Sounds good. All right. So we'll do this one, uh, again, 78 cents, uh, was, uh, SMV value. So it looks now the smooth edge is 81. So that looks pretty fair. So we'll buy now the, it just popped up on call spread so th this is moving all over the place uh so let's force this uh and do this trade and then so that's oh yeah it's m moved to the very end so um let's go back to the option scanner on call spread order So that's working out. So that got filled. Let's go now back to the option scanner. 
and let's buy that put spread. So the highest long put spread is there. Uh, why? <laughs> why did that happen? Look at it. Same same strike. I've never seen that. There must be, you know, there must be something weird in the strikes file there. So let's see if we can find another long put spread. I think we want to do that one, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. uh, here's a long put spread. All right, yeah. So let's go with this one. 207. We'll give them a little bit. And our uh, our paper trading uh, knows how much we're paying through the mid, and uh, it'll give us that percentage of probability of of, of getting filled. So we're, we're we're waiting on this one right now. And that's a pretty advanced paper trader compared yeah. to you know a lot of the others on the market. You know, we've worked a long time to make a really um, advanced paper trader and make it uh, close to what the real market is is doing. Yeah, definitely. So I, in the last <clears throat> few minutes here, Matt, I just want to talk about our APIs. Um, it's you know you can get all this same data that we're showing through the dashboard and that we have historically. Through our APIs and the endpoints are REST based and they're very easy to query. Um, you know, you just uh, type in your your ticker that you want data from, uh, and and it makes it really easy. So uh, you can get historical data as well as live real time data through our APIs. And you know, we have a really neat API console, um, and you know it lists all the endpoints we have documentation you could test it here what i always think is cool i can't still can't believe that we could do this is uh go back at any minute in time like here here's one in apple 2022.08 at 10 a.m and you could change this to 1001 <laughs> yeah. and then you know go get that data yeah and it's that quick yeah and, I, I mean it it really opens the door to sort of anything you can dream of yeah. analyzing, right? Any sort of movement in the option price. And yeah, you know, it, it's, we have the data for you to um, analyze and explore. Yeah. So, and, you know, it comes through again with prices, uh, what our values are, theoretical values, and then our forecast values are in here. And, and when the snapshot went up, so, and then with all the Greeks, so, Pretty amazing um, API uh, that we've built out, um, and like you said, you, you know we have live now uh, delayed. You could go get minute by minute. You go back to 2007 and get stuff. You could, you could do cores, which is very summarized. You could get a lot of that uh, best ETF relationship information in there. So there's there's a ton of of uh, information going there um, in the APIs, Tyler. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's hard for anybody else to supply this depth of uh, history and this, the breadth of symbols that we offer. Over five thousand symbols you can query via the API, back to two thousand seven for near end of day data, and back to August twenty twenty for one minute granularity. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, unless you have anything else, Matt, I think that wraps it up. Um, good trades for today. Uh, I think we you know, demonstrated some good capabilities and advantages of ORAT's data and tools. Uh, if you guys have any questions on our stuff, uh, please email us at support at ORATS.com, or you can leave a comment below on the YouTube video. Uh, we'll see you guys again next week. Thanks, Todd. Matt. You know how the financial world goes. Here comes the buzzkill. Please make sure to take some time to read this boring disclaimer. We will owe you one.